I'm Scott Allen Miller. This is my life living in Leon, Nicaragua. Today we're going to diverge a little bit from our normal topics that I want to talk about something because we just had some coral snakes here. We're going to talk about that. We're also going to talk about this myth of people talking about poisonous and venomous. I think this is going to be a little bit interesting and something that people don't expect. So let's dig into that right after that bump. First, let's talk a little bit about coral snakes here in Nicaragua. So this region of the world does have coral snakes. And for those who are not familiar, coral snakes are quite venomous. They tend to be quite dangerous, but mostly to only small animals. The reason being that they have a difficult time puncturing the skin of larger, tougher creatures like adult humans. So in many cases, coral snakes don't present a really big risk. But if you have small animals and pets, then yeah, you need to be a little bit worried. But coral snakes are pretty shy. They're normally not going to come and bother you in any way. In my particular case, we had some work being done on a new septic system in the backyard. They were digging out the yard. And while doing so, they disrupted an area where we supposed there were some snakes. And they ended up just in our backyard and moving around. And our security guard found them and killed them. So two coral snakes were killed in our backyard. We only know they were coral snakes because we were able to identify them as Allen's coral snakes after the fact. In many cases, you don't have coral snakes around your house. That's not the norm. We have in our house before had king snakes and you want king snakes, not necessarily in your kitchen like we had them, but you do want them in your yard. They're not aggressive. They make good pets. I'm not saying you should grab one for that purpose, but they're very docile. They're very friendly. And they, as the name implies, a king in a snake name means it eats whatever it's named after. So king snakes eat snakes uh, are pretty great to have because they protect you from, for example, coral snakes. So you don't want to do something to disrupt king snakes because they protect you from other things. So they're pretty fantastic. So in most cases here in Nicaragua, you don't need to worry about the snakes around you. It is rare for them to be a major threat. We do have boa constrictors, but they're very, very small. And I don't believe that they ever really pose a threat to, again, adult humans. They're just not big enough. They're more going after very small animals. I have seen one here, so they definitely exist and you definitely run into them. In this case, actually ran into it with a car, but generally uh, not much of a threat not something you have to worry about. So we really don't go around worrying about snakes here, but finding coral snakes in our yard did give us just a moment of pause. But really, under normal circumstances, they're going to keep away from you so well, you don't have to worry about them, but they do exist. A lot of people, when they're coming to the tropics, really worry about all the little creatures that may be here because things are very different than nearly anywhere else in the world. If you're looking at North America, Europe, we have totally different snakes, totally different bugs, all kinds of stuff. But in general, we actually have very few that are dangerous here. Even I'm very surprised by how little we have to worry about the creepy crawlies that we have going on. They're just not things that negatively impact us. So that's really not too much of a problem. Some things exist everywhere but we don't worry about them. You can go walking in the jungle, take, go in the wilds. We don't have bear. We don't have big things that you have to worry about. I'm from New York. We're going out in the woods was scary. There's lots of things that can hurt you out there. Here, basically nothing. And way more poisonous snakes in New York, way more poisonous snakes in Texas. Uh, so this area is really quite good for just how few there are, how, how little there are. So, but that brings up a question because when you're talking about venomous snakes, people will often say, well, that's a poisonous snake. And then of course, the thing that people say is, well, it's venomous, not poisonous. Venom is something that's injected. Poison is something you ingest. And this is said so commonly that you start to think it may be true, but this does cause a problem. And this is what made me stop and think about it. Of course, if you eat a snake that is venomous, it's actually quite dangerous for you. Maybe not as dangerous as if it's injected into your bloodstream, but it's not good for you either. If you were to take the venom from a snake and put it into a jar, is it then venom or is it poison? If you drink it, did it become poison? And this is important because it creates a linguistic problem if we believe the venomous, not poisonous statement. If we take the, the venom out of the snake, is it still venom? And according to the concept of the of way how it's ex explained, it is not. It becomes po a po poison. That doesn't really make sense. So what if you have something in a jar, but you can't actually say it's a poison until someone drinks it? In a situation like this, we're lacking a word that explains what the thing is, the liquid, we'll assume, in the jar until it's used to harm someone. If we inject it in someone via teeth, it's a venom. If we give it to them in some other way, it's a poison. But before we do so, it must be neither because both is defined by the way you are exposed to it. Well, that doesn't make sense. 
Like we have to have a word. And that word could be a toxin, but if you look up toxin, it doesn't describe that either. A toxin must be organic and have a bunch of limitations, like it just isn't that word. So we're actually lacking that word, except we're not. Turns out that the statement that something is venomous, not poisonous, or poisonous, it's something that you drink is poisonous, and venomous is something that you get when you get bit, is simply wrong. Now, first of all, let's look at the roots of these words, because this is interesting. Venom comes from the Latin word for poison. A little bit confusing there that that switched, uh, switched meanings over time. The English word poison comes also through the French, just like uh, venom does, from the Latin word for potion. And because of those changes over time, you can easily see why we have a impression that poison is something you're going to ingest, because it has a potion tradition uh, in Latin originally. But in the current English, things have changed dramatically. Instead of venom being used for poison, and the reason this comes up before I explain this finally, is that in Spanish we use the word venom, or its derivative, to mean poison and venom. So in Spanish, we have one word, and it is not the word that we would think you would use in English that means both things. If you were going to apply something to both potions and uh, poisons and venoms that seems universal, it is a poison, not a venom, that seems like it would make more sense. And there's a reason for that, because that's correct. But in Spanish, it is venom, and they have no word for poison, or no exact word for poison. They simply use venom for both cases, and they don't differentiate. And in reality, differentiating makes no sense, because it's such a stupid concept. And that's why people use it incorrectly, and why people think it's fun to correct them, because it doesn't make any sense, and so it, that's why you have this gap in knowledge. Okay, so that's how it works in Spanish. And the reason this comes up is because I have to learn this in Spanish and you have to be able to use it. And so as you're going through a Spanish journey, many of you are understanding that venom is the traditional Latin for poison suddenly explains why we use it for anything that's venomous or poisonous in Spanish. In English, in reality, things that are venomous are also poisonous. Poison is a general case word. It does not imply that we drink it. It does not imply that we are not bitten. It is absolutely generic. So snakes are poisonous, both in that you can eat them and that could be harmful to you, but also that they can bite you and that would be harmful to you. In both cases, they are poisonous. In all cases, you can use the term poison or poisonous. The thing that's in a snake is both a venom and a poison, but it's only a venom because they inject through a bite. So in English, but not in Spanish, venom is limited to when an animal is injecting via a bite. So it is a special type of poison, but it is not instead of being a poison. So anytime someone says, well, that's poisonous, and you want to say, well, no, it's actually venomous, Stop yourself because that's not a correction. You are actually the one that's incorrect. You are free to call it venomous, that is correct. But saying it is not poisonous is, makes no sense because that would make it not venomous. So that is how it actually works in English and why that is just a trick that people use when, and we use the term, need to be correct, right? Someone who wants to be correct but doesn't have anything to be correct about because no one else was wrong about something, use this as a thing so they can correct someone on something that is so weird that it catches people off guard and they go, oh, I guess I never thought about it. And there's a reason they didn't think about it because it's not an actual thing, but it seems just viable enough that unless you think about it a lot and go, wait, what's the generic word for either of those things? We can't have that gap in the language. We can't have a poison sitting on a shelf. And you know this to be true, because if you think about like you have a thing on the shelf and it's got the skull and crossbones on it and you keep your cyanide on the shelf, I really hope you don't do that. But you got your cyanide on the shelf, you got your rat poison on the shelf, all these things. Those are poisons. We know they're poisons. We use that term all the time. We know that things that we have not ingested are poisons. That alone tells us that something's wrong with the proposed definition that it's only a poison if you ingest it, because until it's ingested, it wouldn't be a poison. And just like the snake, it wouldn't be a venom until it bit you. But it's meant to be injected, so venom is applicable, but they're always a poison because it's not state-based, it's what it is, it's object-based. Wow. Weird topic for today, but it's a good one for you to know. You all now have the power when someone tries to correct you on that or you accidentally say that a, you know, a poison dart frog is actually poisonous and someone says, no, it's just called that. It's actually venomous. You can be like, um, it is venomous, but it's also poisonous. Come on, people. Don't let them just pull that out. I hate when people falsely correct. It's one of the most annoying things. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you like help support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com. 
slash Scott Allen Miller. It is my poison of choice. It is not a venom. I will see all of you tomorrow. And support the channel. Click on one of these links that come up here. If you don't see one, scroll down, or you don't like one of these, scroll down and pick one of those. And of course, go down in the show notes and leave some comments. We love it when we get comments.